Why do we think that today? Why do we think that the environment is precious? That women have equal rights? That slavery is wrong? Because of movements in American history. It wasn't a political party. It wasn't an idea. It was a confluence of different organizations pointing to a single objective. To defeat a single idea or to promote a new one. And that's what we're going to be talking about. The Vermont Campaign for Liberty does believe that the Constitution of the United States has wonderful principles that we need to defend and restore to this republic. We have not, however, thrown out the idea that in the end, part of that Constitution provides for a secession of states. If those governmental entities are destructive to our independence and our liberty, we may not agree on everything, but we agree on this. That in order to have a more perfect union, whether it be in an independent Vermont or in a larger United States, we have to be an engaged and informed citizenry. Because hmm. it's too easy to leave it to the experts. Because that's what we've done for over 100 years. Hmm. We've left it to the experts. And this is where we are today. Non-responsive government in Washington and in Montpelier. A disengaging citizenry that will knock themselves out to vote on American Idol, but can't find their way to the voting booth. My daughter can probably quote you all the lyrics on every song she has in her iPod, but her educational institution can't seem to inform her about basic U.S. history, labor history, women's rights, but also the history of other nations. Why is that? We've had 30 years worth of Washington-funded and controlled education. And why are we blaming the local school districts for the trouble we face today? We have to ask these, ourselves these questions. And how do we solve these problems? We're not going to do it by having a professor, a pundit, come in and say, this is the answer. Adopt it and everything will be okay. But that hasn't worked. It has to be organic. As the environmental movement was, as the anti-slave movement was, as the civil rights movement was, as the women's rights movement was. In order to do that, that's what we're about. That's how much we believe in citizenry. That's how much we believe in individual liberty. Because in our organization, it's not top down. The, door, the doors are open. We'll let a thousand flowers bloom. Make that which you can do, make it happen. So I have somebody right now just churning out propaganda, just bumper stickers, tchotchkes. This guy is just limitless in the stuff he's doing. I got somebody else who's organizing rallies. How many people here have heard of S510? There you go. S510, food sovereignty. The federal government wants to basically expand its authority in the food industry. Yet so far, yet so far, with governmental involvement in the food industry, have you really been that much safer? Are you any safer than you would be if you just walked down the street and bought from a local farmer? Vermont last year just passed a law regulating the term farmer's market. They get to determine what a farmer's market is. Why? I know what a farmer's market is. It's when three station wagons are pulled off on the side of the road and they're selling corn out the back. That's a farmer's market to me. The key of it is, is that we're looking for top-down solutions. But this organization has an opportunity, as does ours, to be bottom up. In order to do that, you have to recruit within the people. Find that motivated minority. Those people who are consciously rebelling against. And not find your differences. It's too easy to draw the line, and that's what happens all the time. But to find the commonality. Because when you find that, there's strength in numbers. You don't always have to agree. But you always have to share one common goal. For me, that's personal sovereignty. That's making my government responsive. I don't chase after Washington. Because I'm one of 600,000 people, and sadly, he doesn't care. But guess who does care? My local representative. I know where he lives. I know where it's not, what his phone number is. How many people here have visited the State House during session? Good. Do it. Do it all the time. Because you are the lobbyist for your own position. Get involved. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, could you say a little more about the organization? I mean, um, do you have a board? Uh, okay. Do you, um, 
you know, well, that sort of stuff. Organizationally, um, the National Campaign for Liberty, which came out of the Ron Paul campaign, thank oh, you, okay. came out of the Ron Paul campaign. When Mr. Paul finally lost the nomination, he had $5 million in his pocket. So he took the $5 million and he handled it, handed it to the national organization and said, here, the message is more important than the man. Take this and organize. So they took the $5 million and they set up a website and they're doing all their things in Washington and good for them. But then they turned to all the local organizations and said, here, in each of your own states, organize yourself. Use your own principles. Respond to the reality that is on the ground. So here in Vermont, organizationally, I got nominated, for whatever reason, interim state chair. Since that time, we've had meetings with memberships. We meet on a quarterly basis with the members. There is, uh, used to be, but we've kind of discontinued the practice, uh, there used to be uh, regular meetings of what were called local coordinators. The reason we discontinued it was is because larger members wanted participation, and the whole local coordinator idea was kind of ridiculous to begin with. We have an active website. We have basically meetup pages, Facebook pages. We're constantly communicating all the time. Ideas are flowing all over the place. Yes, sir. Um, did you have an no, but I, if we want to uh, follow up on that, we have to let the next person go. So so well, oh, my minute's up? Oh, yeah. But if oh. We, <laughs> yeah, well, okay. You didn't get to the 10th Amendment resolution. Oh, okay. I just wanted to mention that at the last meeting of this group, basically, in Goddard <coughs> College, we, get, we, we wrote a 10th Amendment resolution, signed mm -hmm. it, and I submitted it to some legislators, but it didn't go anywhere. So Absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. We can definitely do that again, and we'd like to get, you know, leave us to support yep. with that. We had the same thing. One of the things that we learned really quickly in the political process is, is that if it's not a horse worth trading, you never see it on the floor. So we did our own Tenth Amendment. The principle is simply that the Constitution provides for individual states to have say on the state issues. Our Tenth Amendment resolution called the federal government on this. Basically said that there are certain things in this state belong to the state and its citizens, and that the federal government does not have a say in it. Presented that to our legislators, and our response is similar to yours. They looked at it and said, oh, this will never pass. But it's an educational process, because now more people My understand. My point is that we should collaborate rather than... Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I just wanted to throw this out here. There are some things you do that fail, but there's a reason why you want it to fail. Because you want to educate. Every contact that you have with a person who agrees or disagrees with you is an opportunity to set the paradigm of the conversation. People are now talking about the Tenth Amendment, where two years ago it was never even heard of. Um, do 